All right, let's try this. Guys, I wanted to show you uh, how to modify one of these pad drivers. You know, we talked about this on the forum the other day. Uh, I'm going to be modifying this one where I can use my microfiber pads. So, you know, first and foremost, you got to get rid of all of the little, the little teeth that are on here. Those teeth are going to cause you a problem. And, you know, I thought there's probably a dozen different ways to get them off of there. I'm just going to show you a couple of three that I've come across that, that seem to work and, and work well. Um, the most surprising is the one that works the best. It seems to be actually the easiest. I'm going to start out with this. Let's start out with a Dremel. Uh, Dremel tool, if you have one, you can just go in and I'll show you shaving it. All right, and with the Dremel tool, um, I wouldn't get too terribly concerned about the fact that it's scarring that board just a tiny bit. Um, what I'm going to put on here, I'm going to put a little glue on this anyhow, so that'll do nothing but make it a little better for the glue to stick. One of the reasons the glue and the, and the Velcro and all doesn't want to stick well, that's a shiny surface. If you can rough it up a little bit, it'll work a bit better. Uh, and then my second method that I've used is with a sorry is with just a regular chisel you can just take a regular old wood chisel like this and just push them and they'll push right off of there uh, as you can tell that works pretty well too you can if you leave them a little high you can go back and scrape um, let me see if I can get my hand out of the way where we can actually see it but basically just push it and it leaves it pretty smooth you know right where they would go but my favorite method, and you may not have a knife like this, but uh, my favorite knife is this little guy. I got this thing as a Christmas gift last year, and it has been really handy. The blade is replaceable. You can actually push a button, pull the blade out, and it is literally sharp as a razor. But the simplest way to get these off is like this. And that's all it is to it. And it goes really, really fast when you do it that way. Um, just find your spot and work them. But you see how well they come off. So it doesn't have to be a lot of work. I know some guys have used a, uh, a rasp to get them off. I was going to use the, the disc sander to get them off. And I thought, well, you know, not everybody has a disc sander. Not everybody has all these other pieces. So... You know, almost everybody's got a knife of some kind. Sharpen it up. A lot of people have a chisel. A lot of people have a Dremel tool. So this should be um, the first step is to get rid of this. Once we get all these off here, we're going to do some other things. So you guys hang around. I'm going to show you some other steps in just a few minutes. Okay, to make the base of this, what I did is I went to Walmart and I grabbed a, a poly cutting board. Uh, I know a lot of you thinking that this poly cutting board probably won't allow that velcro to stick any better than the than the actual driver will but uh we're going to do some special things when we get to that so what we're going to do next is i'm just going to take this and i'm going to draw a circle out now i don't much care how you cut this you can use a jigsaw you can use a handsaw you can um, whatever floats your boat, I'm going to take it outside to the bandsaw and cut it, and then we'll pick up the build from there. Now that we have our, uh, our driver disc built, it's a nice round disc. I was able to sand the edges around on it a little bit, and we've got our driver disc here, our, uh, actually pad driver. I've got it, uh, nice and smooth, and I've roughed the surface up a little bit. Here is what we're going to be using to actually bond this together. This is JB Weld Plastic Bonder. It says it uh, bonds any kind of plastic to plastic. Uh, of course, plastic to metal and plastic to a lot of other things. But in this case, I'm more interested in plastic to plastic. So uh, we're going to use this. And I'm going to apply a little bit here. And then we're going to drop the driver on. I'm going to put a couple of clamps on let those clamps hold it uh, while it's drying. All right, 
we're going to mix equal parts and basically you're just going to squeeze this until equal parts come out we're going to give her a good solid stir listen there are other plastic glues that will work fine uh, i looked at several of them the problem is her set time is so quick this sets in 15 minutes and uh, it's basically cured in 30 so it's going to be a, a great product for us to use uh, you know it gives us just a little bit of working time which is what we need all right so i'm going to start out by spreading some of that i'm going to spread it on here and i may not have mixed enough that's okay we're going to mix whatever we have to to get it mixed but uh, this is my first go all right that's that first little bit and i'm not going to let that stay on my finger so let's mix up just a tiny bit more Fortunately, I had prepared for that. I didn't, I don't ever like to mix up too much at one time, but in this case, I've got to have a lot. So, all right, that ought to be plenty. If that won't do it, we've got a problem. So here we go. We're going to mix this up again. Looks familiar, doesn't it? All right. One of the reasons I chose the plastic, um, Donnie Cisco on the VLM forum, um, he had a great idea of using plywood to attach to the driver so your Velcro would have something to stick to that you could actually shoot a staple in. I was worried about the plywood getting wet. And uh, I knew a friend of mine at my office told me that uh, he had used one of these boards before in the furniture industry and that these cutting boards work real well because you can shoot a staple right in it. So uh, I thought I'd give the it a go uh, little, probably cost about the same as if you had to buy quarter inch plywood or whatever. So I'm going to spread this just a little bit to kind of get a even coat, especially out to the edge. Just a little bit out here to the edges. But uh, so price wise, I don't think this is too bad. This thing can be bought at, at Walmart and that's, that's a good thing because you can get the pad and uh, it should work. We're going to get a little in the middle here if we can. Just a little bit right there. Now, I'm, I'm one of those odd people that has tons of clamps. I don't know why I have so many clamps. I just have a lot of clamps. And I'm assuming that having a lot of clamps is going to be an asset when we start, start doing this. So, all right. That looks good. I'm going to take my driver and I'm going to try to center it the best I can. Now, I cut it really close, and I made sure that it was really close to being in the center when I started. All right, so we're gonna hold it right there. Let me grab a paper towel and get my hands clean so we can do this. And I'm gonna apply a few clamps to this to make sure that it holds it nicely. All right, so it's good and centered. Let's hope it stays that way. Whoop, of course it didn't because with my big Fred Flintstone fingers, I bumped everything and misaligned it. So let's try it like this. All right, how about just a few of these around the perimeter? Like that. We're going to keep putting them on. But like I said, I'm a freak. I'm a woodworker, so I have a few clamps here and there. I'm going to clamp as much as I can around it. Um, I believe you could probably use clothespins to do the same thing. In my case, I didn't want to go find the clothespins. We probably have them, but I didn't necessarily want to go find them. So I'm going to clamp them a little different. All right. So what we're going to do now, we got her, got her clamped up. I'm probably going to add one or two more clamps to this. And then I'm just going to let it dry for a few minutes, and then we'll pick the build back up after that. All right, guys, what I did is I took the, took the clamps off of my driver, and uh, I decided to add a little reinforcement to the driver. Um, I say reinforcement. What I wanted to do was make it to where there's no way it could possibly spin, you know, no way that it could you know, spin the driver around. And um, so 
what I did is I drilled a few holes in. Right, let's come back and look at hardware first. I went and I bought some stainless steel hardware. I bought a, basically a half inch stainless steel screw, a stainless steel fender washer in the 3 16 size, and a nut to go on them. And uh, I'm gonna use this Loctite. It's actually a glue, kinda like a super glue, but just a little more um, plasticky. I'm gonna use that kinda like Loctite to make the bolts where they don't uh, easily um, you know, spin out or back out or whatever. So anyhow, this is what I got, uh, and that's what we're gonna do. So let me show you what I did here. First thing I did is I dropped my washer I took my washer and I stuck it where I wanted it to go and I took this little tiny bit and I drilled a pilot hole all the way through the center to the other side. Then I marked this bit, which is a 5 16 I think. Um, I marked it to where it would uh, have be about half the depth, about half the depth of the driver, okay? So then I did a countersink to countersink in. I'm trying to get where you can see it on the camera. And then I took this bit and I drilled all the way through. And so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop this stainless steel piece in or stainless steel screw in. We're going to flip it over. We're going to drop that little guy right there on. And I'm going to take some glue and put a tiny bit of glue on here. And what that'll do is it'll keep the, the nut from easily spinning off. I don't think it will, but I'm not going to take any chances with it either. And this is very difficult for me to do one-handed. Uh, again, I'm trying to get it where the camera can pick it up. Take my 3 8 wrench here. And I'm just going to snug it down nice and snug. So basically, whoop, a little glue everywhere. It's spinning on the other side, guys. Just stick with me. All right. right now I pulled that down nice and tight. I'm going to take a paper towel and uh, wipe up the excess glue because I got a little glue everywhere. So I'm going to just wipe off some of the excess glue right here so it's not so bad. Now we're going back up here and take a good look at this driver. We're going to talk about a couple things. So what I've done is I've only put four in. I put, uh, I put four in because I really didn't think that I needed them. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't spin. I countersunk. I used stainless steel hardware. And... Uh, I believe, you know, I used a plastic glue on this thing when I when I glued it last night, and it was really glued nice and solid. And I let it set all night long before I, uh, it would have dried in 30 minutes, but I was tired. I let, it, I let it dry. So I really believe that the glue would have held it by itself, but I wasn't going to take any chances on it. So uh, I put the bolts in it. Now, I also believe the more I looked at this last night, the more I realized I could have used clear silicone on the on the faces and put it together with the clear silicone. I don't believe clear silicone would allow that, that driver to go anywhere. I don't believe it's going, I don't believe it's going to spin or anything. So, I wanted you to see that little operation before we move to the next. So, in our next little segment, I'm going to show you how we finish this guy out. All right, now that we've got the driver smooth, I've gone ahead and I've applied some of the some of the Velcro to it. Um, you know, I went with Velcro that I could pick up local. This is 10 pound, this is regular 10 pound Velcro. I've heard some guys complain that the 10 pound Velcro was uh, stuck a little too well. Uh, we, we're gonna find out, I'm sure. Um, there's a company online, it's a woodworking company that sells a big piece of Velcro that you could literally put over the whole uh, over the whole driver, but uh, again, I didn't want to order it. I was trying to make this out of everything that I could find local. Um, you know, by the time you build this driver, you're going to have the same amount of money in this guy. Unless you have a lot of this stuff at home, you're going to have the same amount of money as you could buy the Challenger driver. Challenger now makes a driver for a, 
for an auric. Um, the only issue I've seen with it is it's made out of wood, and I know of at least one case of where the wood came all to pieces after staying wet for a while. That's why I decided to use plastic on mine instead of using uh, wood or anything else. But uh, in this case, I was going for things that I can find local, um, and a lot of this I already had, and, and you know, Velcro can be found at Walmart, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, the stapler I'm using is just a small stapler. It's a handheld stapler, but it shoots a small staple. This stuff staples real well, and I will say this, put some good Velcro on, because you may not ever get that staple out of there again. That staple's in there pretty, pretty well. Uh, you may have to cut them off level with the board if you ever have to change the Velcro, which I'm sure you will. They're going to get dirty. Anyhow, I'm going to apply this one piece just so you can see how I've done it. And again, this is not the right way or there's no wrong way or right way, I guess, to put this on. I've seen guys that just use straight across strips. Uh, I'm going to put this piece on. I'll probably come back in between and put a piece in between each one of these, uh, you know, just to make it hold as secure as possible. But basically, I have this glue. This is DAP Rapid Fuse Glue. And what this glue does is it sets plastics. It glues plastics down really well, but it's like, um, uh, it's like a super glue. Uh, you've got about a 10 or 12 seconds that you can reposition, and if you don't get it by then, it is stuck, and you're never going to get it loose again. So um, I didn't use this to glue the, the actual board to the driver itself because I thought I would never, ever get it off if I ever had to. Uh, this I'm not too concerned about. We're just going to use it to help hold the Velcro. This Velcro has really, really solid glue on it. Um, it has great glue, and that glue would pretty much hold it. But I'm just giving a little insurance. So by, by using a little dab of this and then putting a staple in it, I'm actually ensuring that this, this piece stays down, which is what we want it to do. So I'll put a little right there. I'll go on and peel this. Then I'm going to run just a little strip of glue underneath. And again, all I'm trying to do is help it stay down. Um, the longer it stays down, the better off we are. And all the people I saw that modified drivers before, they worked real well. Um, the biggest problem I saw was the fact that, you know, after using it a while, it would turn loose from the driver. So I'm trying my best to make sure that it doesn't. Stable. Another staple and a staple. Now, that should hold those. You know, you can wipe off any excess glue if you want to. Uh, whatever, this thing's going to look perfectly pretty ragged after it's used for a little while. But there you go. That's what the driver's going to look like overall. Uh, like I said, I'll come back. I'll add a few little pieces around it. But, you know, uh, the driver... Uh, you know, I have the washers here. That just kind of spreads the load out so it don't just put all of it right in one spot on the plastic. This is a plastic, and it ain't even a great plastic. It's a, uh, it's an odd little tenth of an inch thick plastic. So I thought I'd spread the load out all the way around. But we we are glued on with a, with a plastic glue. Um, we have the load spread out. And we have our Velcro on, and the Velcro has staples in it. So... I would think that we have the best chance of that driver staying together as we possibly could. You know, it'll stick now. Sticks pretty well. So I believe it's going to work really well by the time uh, you put some weight on it. It should stick really well. A couple extra pieces and we are done. I'm glad you guys joined me. I will uh, post some videos later on to me using it. So you can kind of see how it works out and I'll kind of keep you a, a running, um, running commentary on whether or not it works well, things that I would change. But really, this was to prove that I could make one with local stuff and, uh, you know, all of this can be bought local. And if you are just concerned about money, just buy the Challenger driver. It'll work fine. All right. Thanks for joining me. Please hit like, please hit subscribe and I'll try to post some more videos for you. Thank you very much.